definitely they on Future World Champion. And I'm very thankful for this interview with the Jab Podcast. Everybody go check out that show, this awesome show on the Jab Effect.com. Jab is the key. All right, y'all, what's going on? Welcome back to another Jab Podcast. This is episode 88. My name is Combo Breaker 99 and I got a special guest on the line today. She's a three-time Golden Glove champion. She's a decorated amateur. She's coming from a man in his home city, Baltimore. And um, she's going to be making her pro debut January 26th. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm about to see what I can do at the pro level January 26th. And then I'm going to be the queen that night. Okay, sounds good. Everybody, I got Destiny Day Owens on the line. Just want to thank you for being on the show today. Uh, how's everything been going in training? It's been going great. I had an amazing camp. It's still not over. We got a little bit left. We're going to uh, go over tomorrow and the next week. We're just going to uh, keep working on getting better. Yeah, we're going to go over there tomorrow and the next week. We're going to make sure we're going to wait and anything like that. But it's been, we, we brought down some, some, some interesting people for spying. We've been going hard. The gym... Well, we know for our work ethic. We work, so I didn't have to go into that, but I, I learned a lot. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, as far as your sparring, like uh, any uh, other guys that are just turning pro or just some other amateurs you've been working with? No, well, I've been, I've been working with all pros for this camp. Got um, you. Maybe one or two amateurs. Uh, and my, out of my gym, I'm the only amateur turning pro. We have another pro, Mike Allison. Um, well, we call him Quad, but he's going to be on the card, too. But this is not his day, too. He already got a few knockouts. Yeah, because uh, last Thursday, whenever uh, Mac had called me, he told me y'all were getting it in. Y'all were sparring that day, so. <laughs> yeah, yep. We sparred straight through the time. Um, by the time I looked up, I didn't even know what time it was. I was in the ring. Yeah, because uh, whenever he was talking to me, he was like, oh, they're calling me back, so I got to go. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's cool, <laughs> you know. You know, we were just trying. We were just trying to work around y'all's time, but um, but um, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, you know, where you originally from, and you know, what got you into the sport of boxing? I'm from here. I'm from Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Um, never. Well, actually, no. I never lived outside of Baltimore, so I'm definitely representing for the home team when I go out there. Uh, I'm a mother. I have two daughters. They box too, actually. Um, I used to be a head coach. My coach is a head coach for them now. Um, what is it? I pretty much got into it because I had a, a bad temper. Mm-hmm. I worked on it over the years. Discipline. You have to have discipline in boxing. It's no joke. Oh, yeah. Um, you, you probably already know. And, um, Coach Matt definitely uh, helped me work through a lot of the, the issues. Um, himself, and, and when you, whenever you get the chance to talk to him, he'll tell you about it. It's been crazy, but it's been a long ride, but it's all worth it. Um, but originally, my dad is the one that um, I won't say he got me into boxing because I was always like a fighter. I always, well, I was always fighting. It wasn't good, but I was always fighting um, before boxing. He actually bought me a heavy bag at one point, though, and was just like, "Look, take this." And, and get your ass out like that. Stop going fighting people. Stop doing what you're doing. Your life not going to go in the right direction. Mm-hmm. I was all at it. I didn't really understand too much back then. So um, I went to his advice. Uh, got a lot of that. You know, people used to walk past me out in the backyard. They used to be like, well, would you box or something? You look nicer. I'm like, no, I don't box. I don't, I don't do none of that. I'm just out here. And... Eventually, well, after after that time frame, that was when I was a teenager. After that time frame, I had my second daughter, and um, I didn't know what was going to happen. I had a lot of people that, that actually saw the love I had for it already without ever even stepping into a gym. Mm-hmm. So they kind of, like, tried to hold me back, like, like it's just they didn't want me to do it or something. I'm not going to, you know, put everybody out there, but it's just, I don't know why they didn't want me to, to do what I what I loved it at that point because I never played a sport, never really was involved in anything. So when I saw that, I, I was just like, oh, I might be a little more serious than just um just hitting the bag. Right. Uh, eventually, that's when eventually um 
Well, I went out on my own after that and uh, saw all the times again, so I had to move back with my mother. And I found a gym. I got in there, so I'm like, I'm like 19 now at this time. I get in there and it was a wrap ever since. Like, they put me in the ring. They saw me training and everything. And it was like, okay, um, she okay. She got good form and everything, but we, we don't know how she really going to be until she get, until we see her get hit. Let's see if she can take a hit or something. Mm-hmm. It was funny to me because I knew myself. I know what I've been through. So I was like, okay, but it, everything is different in the ring. The ring is not the street. Oh, I had to learn that myself. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you, like, yeah. whenever you were, when you used to be fighting in the streets before, or like, were you just really street fighting, or were you already kind of nice with the hands before? I feel like I'm not trying to shoot my own horn, but I feel like I already had hands. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't trained in anything, but I have rarely lost fights. People used to bank me all the time because they thought they thought they couldn't win. Uh huh. I. I didn't really fight too many girls coming up, though. Like, my family, my brothers, everybody, I never went and got them. They'll tell you that, so. If they came outside, they saw me fighting with some boy or something for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> I never used to start stuff. I got you. I got you. So, like you say, transitioning from street fighting into the ring, like, how, how was how was that transition? Like, how was that discipline? Because I, I know it. You, you know, I know it myself, and I... I just want to hear how it was for you for your first time. Yeah, um, it, I think everything is beautiful to me now. It just took a little bit of hard work to get disciplined in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, not just you know coming down crazy punches, doing whatever I want, just getting mad, wild out or something. No, that don't work in the ring. That do not work in the ring. Yeah, that's the difference. So how did you um how did you link up with Mac Allison and uh how'd you like link up with the uh, Time to Grind boxing gym? He was running up then for a long time, mm-hmm. and um, I was I was getting it in down at Lock Raven with uh, Mr. Frank Frank Gilbert, rest in peace. To him, he passed away. Um, and Coach Mac actually is a, a official too, so he saw me at fights. He saw me around, and he said, "You know, this girl she can fight a lot of people." He told me. I'm just telling you what he told me. He said, uh, a lot of people used to think that um, I probably wouldn't go too far because, like I said in the beginning, I was working through a lot of anger issues um, that kind of translated into the race. But, um, you know, people were at the gym talk and everything. So he was like, I think I think um, she'll be all right. And um, when Mr. Frank got sick, our gym, we, we split up. Two of us tried to stay together. And I ran into him at a gym where I was just working out. I was just training, uh, trying to stay sharp until I found my gym home at Mogtown. Mm-hmm. And he was, like, telling me a few tips about my footwork and everything. Tell me about uh, some female fighters he worked with in the past, some champions and everything. And I don't know, he just had a real genuine vibe to me. Like, he just seemed like a real person. And he reminded me of my dad. My dad passed away now, but he definitely did remind me of him. Like, you could tell he cared about his fighters just by looking at him in the gym because he brought his fighters down the spa like we do now. Now that I'm with him, uh, we just go to different gym for spa. Mm-hmm. And uh, I talk, I knew one of his fighters. He, he was cool, uh, Terrell. So I talked to him, found out where the gym was. I stopped in one day, and it, it, it was something about the gym. It just reminded me of Lock like, Raven, my uh, my other gym, my original gym. It reminded me of it. Like, it was like a family atmosphere. Was, you could tell it was grinding. It, it, I've never been to a gym that worked harder than time to grind, though. So, um, something about it. I said, this is the place I need to be. It's the place for me. And... We talked, we had a deep talk. He wasn't playing. He was like, I'm not with the the, the craziness. Can't come in any kind of way. He just laid everything out, flat out. But later he told me he was hard at, at the beginning. He told me to go talk to whoever I was training with at the time and everything. He told me he was hard on me coming in because he wanted me to stay if I did come. So that's when I did everything he said. 
made sure I was going to be dedicated. And I'm, uh, I'm loyal. I'm a very loyal person. So I knew I was going to be loyal to the gym. Mm-hmm. Talked to the trainer at the gym I was training at. And I came back, and it was a rat race fence. He said he was happy. He wanted to train me. He just didn't say nothing. Whenever he, he took you in, he was kind of hardy. That was kind of that first intro to that discipline you had to kind of learn, right? You know, it's kind of like yeah. sometimes when a trainer, it's kind of hard on you like that. I understand they're just trying to test you and see what they can get out of you first, you know. And, and, I, and you know, I commend you for that. You know, you really, uh, from what I've seen, you know, online, you know, I've seen you guys training and how he treats everybody in there. You know, you guys really be working hard up in there, you know. Yeah, and, for sure. And one of the things I've... Even today, even to this day, I notice like people still draw the line between male and female fighters. Of course, you know, there's a difference. But I mean, as far as, you know, genders, but I mean, when they get it, when everybody get in there, they're going to take a punch. And I notice like when he's training you, he's training you like everybody, right? Yes, exactly. That's the thing about him, too. Now, in that little time frame where after Mr. Frank got sick and I was actually looking for a trainer, I was around a lot of other trainers and I saw how it was. And the other gym, like, it's not the same everywhere. He don't treat me no different. I If if, if everybody working on something, I'm working on something. Everybody's sparring, I'm sparring with everybody. We don't usually have females for me to spar or he's not going to take it easy on me or nothing like that. Uh, he want me to get uh, everything I can. Yeah. I mean, yeah, from everything you're telling me, like, he sees something in you. But uh, kind of backtracking to what you were saying earlier, like, Whenever you were younger and you were, you would be working out and like they saw that you had something. Why do you think that is? Like some people felt like they didn't want to see you exceed. You know. Oh, specifically, I think my daughter's father just uh, he kind of told me what it was. No, it's not just him, but it was other people like from my neighborhood and stuff like that. Cause for their reason, it's because. They didn't want me to, to go past whatever level they're at because they were stuck in a, on a one-track mind. Mm. And if I can't do it, you can't do it. You probably gave up on their dreams or something at some point. But specifically for, like, father, my daughter, um, just saw how in love with the sport I was and thought it was going to take away from what we had. I got into a, a really bad altercation with him about the situation and he kind of threw off some things and messed up one of my fights because I ended up messing up one of my hands. Mm. But I knew, I, I, I always knew after I first started, like, I'm not going to really get too far with this person around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, okay. I understand that. But, uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, you got to make those moves like, you know, I think you're making the right move with Mac Allison right now. And um, one of the questions I had is like, when did y'all kind of sit down and decide that, you know, it was time to go pro? You know, it was time to make that leap into the professional you know, realm. Last year, mm-hmm. we had uh, we had did the last Golden Glove and we were going to go pro after that. But what ended up happening was... Um, it was something he saw in my performance or something. He said, you know, I want one more fight. I want to make sure everything is, is tight, everything is perfect. So, scheduled few fights and, like, fighters pulled out. So, it's like, it got delayed a little bit. And then, okay, now, so we got the fight. I won the fight. And um, after that, that's when a situation happened at home where so I hurt my hand and it's like the whole thing was set up. My debut almost kind of, well, no, it was maybe like two months out. We were going to have a long cap for that one. And that situation happened. So I took it as a sign that maybe it wasn't the time and I just stayed in the gym. I, actually, that's why I started working on um, fighting southpaw. I'm really, I think I'm getting good at it now. Um, I had a few injuries where I started working on fighting southpaw, and he said, "Well, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna open the year up with it. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna end the year with it." So I didn't have that in this plan. So now we're gonna 
open up the air. And here we are. Oh, okay. So uh, how you been getting at that uh, that left-handed stance? You get good at it now? I think so. I'm oh, kind of for... tricky with it. <laughs> Cause... Yeah, I don't want to be one-dimensional. Oh, I got you. Yeah, definitely. You know, that that's something you definitely need. You need as many tools you can pick up. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you, too, is like, as far as your training for this professional fight, like, just to let some of the people and the listeners know, like, what was it, what's like, is there any difference between your training from amateur to now? Like, have you been amping anything up in uh, this camp now? Uh, yes, you definitely have to run more. I always ate pretty good, but definitely have to eat clean now. Drink a lot more water. I'm all, I, well, not only, but I'm for the most part sparring with pros. Um, getting that good work. Right. And going harder. Just just simply put, I always put my heart and soul, but since I'm working harder every day, I have more to give now. So, um, as far as you're like sparring with, uh, you know, more like professional style does it differ than your sparring when you did for amateur you know just because like the rounds are shorter but with women's fights it's still two minutes though but i mean do you still kind of have to fight that same way or are you trying to fight a little more patient where you can kind of pick your shots yeah i want to um really place my punches and up my defense and then get up my defense a little bit but anybody tell you like i have really good defense sometimes i just give it away in a fight a little bit because they only want to see how many times you can get hit or how many times you can hit the person really in the amateurs. I've seen it. Like, you can look beautiful with your defense, but they'll, they'll rob you. So sometimes I just go. I just go at it, and I try to get the person out of there. But now I'm still going to do that. I'm always going to be me. But now I'm going to place my punches. I'm going to look for my shots. I'm going to come out there and be smart. Right. And that's the difference. Sometimes, you know, I notice like some fighters, they can exceed more so in the professional because some of them are more thinking fighters. And I think you can kind of take your time more and pick your shots. And if you're more of like a thinking fighter, you know, then pros is for you. You know, some some fighters spend their whole time in amateurs, but, you know, you, you probably, you know, sometimes you don't have to. That can kind of hold you back because I think for those certain reasons, like you said, sometimes, you know, judges look for this and they can rob you, you know. Yeah. I want to ask you some things, too, about uh, the women's boxing scene. Like, as far as, like, you know, the, the boxing scene for women now, I know it's kind of been picking up with, you know, specific fighters, but do you still think, like, a lot of the promotional companies today, they're not really, they're not really putting shine on certain divisions or, like, you know, putting shine on, like, finding the right talent for each division? Um, yeah. They definitely had that pick. Uh, as far as women's boxing as a whole, I think it's 2019 now, so it shouldn't really be a difference. I've seen it last year where everything is really going a lot better as far as we headline in HBO, Showtime type stuff. Um, but still, that's like a middleweight division and, and um, everything. It's a, a whole lot of decent fighters, excellent fighters, actually. All over, not just for women, like, um, on the male side, they definitely focus on welterweight weight and heavyweight, a uh, little bit of uh, the 154 pound division, but I, I think everybody should get that shot. It's, it's still fighting all over the place, especially as women. As women, we work just as hard. It's not harder than the male, so they need to get with the times. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm for that, too, because, like, I follow women's MMA and, you know, I follow the the UFC, the Bellator, their kind of format for the women. And I noticed, like, all the divisions have been kind of um, fixed where you got you got all the talent in one division. And, you know, the women don't have to jump around as much. And I've just been noticing it, like, in boxing for women, it seems like you only got, like, key fighters in one division. But you don't have, like, a, a division that's yeah. really chalked with talent. You know what I mean? You know, some of these girls now, they've been going to, you know, MMA, you know. Uh, do you ever see yourself going over there? Um, no. I saw a few of them, uh, Amanda Serrano and, uh, well, it's, it's some other fighters. Uh, Heather Hardy. They went over there every night. 
yeah, another hardy, she would. But, I mean, everybody can dabble in what they want. I mean, I don't know if I would go over there just to see what I could do. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not bad at uh, everything else because I'm around a lot of, like, wrestlers, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, well, matter of fact, my coach is a mixed martial artist. Uh, oh, okay. So I'm around a lot of people that that know that type of stuff, so I know a little bit of something. But I wouldn't um, go over there just just for the money or nothing like that. Like, no, nah, my heart is in boxing. I got you. Yeah, I respect that. I respect that because uh, I think that a lot of the women were feeling like they had to go over there because the checks were bigger. But you know, it's also right. it's it's a dangerous move too. You know, it's it's not just punching anymore. And um, yeah. I think that uh, the women in boxing they should be treated fairly as far as you know checks and every you know checks uh, getting the shine too. So they won't have to migrate to you know something like mixed martial arts if they don't want to. You know. Yep. I'm more involved in just fighting, too. Like, so I'm going to be all right regardless. I work, but at the same time, I just got certified to be a coach. I'm going to open my own gym one day. I'm in the process of getting certified as a judge and a referee for the amateurs. Oh, congratulations. So, like, I'm, I'm going to be involved in boxing regardless. Okay, that's cool. Uh, you just got recently certified to uh, to be a, a, a coach and ref? Yeah. Like uh, in the last year. Okay, congratulations with that. Yeah, that I mean you you always gonna have a you always got a little outlet in the in the sport. That's good. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about your uh, pro debut. Uh, who's your opponent? Uh, do you know much about? Her? I don't know too much. I know her name is like Michelle Gold or something like that. Okay. I don't know much about her. She's like Michelle Gold or something like that. But I never really paid attention to my opponent too much. I don't ask a lot of questions. I'm gonna get in there and see what's in front of me. And uh, what weight are you guys uh, fighting at? We're going to fight at 140. Okay, 140. Got you. And uh, one other question I have for you. Uh, you know, you got you had a lot of talent coming out of Baltimore, you know, like from the old school, Joe Gans, uh, Dwight uh, Dwight Muhammad Cowie. Uh, you, recently you got, yeah. you know, Tank Davis. Like, Do you feel like any, any excitement or like any pressure, like you want to try to reach their levels or just feel like, you know, you want to kind of be up there too with those guys? I'm in my own lane, doing my own thing. I'm gonna do whatever God has planned for me. But uh, yeah, I do see myself becoming a world champion in multiple weight divisions and uh, hopefully undisputed. Uh, just like Cecilia Breaker, she's been holding it down. I'm, I'm gonna do as much as I can in this sport before it's all said and done. Then I'm going to give everything I got to the next generation. One last question. What's your goal for this for this year, for 2019? Your main goal for this year. 2019? Mm-hmm. With the team I have, it's possible I could fight for a world title this year. If they keep me moving the way they saying, it's possible. So maybe I want to be a world champion this year. Yeah. yeah that, that's, that could be possible. I mean... If he sees it in you, and from what I see in your training, you know, definitely you gotta send me some footage of this fight too coming up, cause you know, I'm not in, I'm not in Baltimore, but you know, I definitely want to see the, I definitely want to see this fight though. Yep. But uh, before we go, just let everybody know where they can find you at as far as your social media, so you know they can f- and keep up with you. All right, everybody can find me all over social media, Twitter, Instagram. Facebook at Destiny Day Owens, the whole name. Uh, on YouTube, I have a channel myself. It's for the love of boxing. Check that out. Some good content. And at my pipes. Just look out for my pipes. Okay, and uh, where and when is your professional debut? My pro debut is uh, January 26, 2019 on the Queen of the Ring. No, dang, I'm, I'm speaking things into existence. The mm-hmm. King of the Ring at the Waldorf Culture Center in Waldorf, Maryland. All right, that sounds it's good. A, it's a Saturday. Cool, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, same day as uh, Thurman and uh, Josito Lopez. Uh, 
you been following that fight? Who you got in that fight? You said Thurman and, and Lopez? Yeah. Well, of course I know it's going to be Thurman. He's been out for a while. He's rusty, but yeah. the man has skills, and he's going to come out there and utilize that. Yeah. Yeah, he still got the skill. Yeah, yeah, he does. Uh, this weekend, Manny and AB, who you got? I got Manny, honestly. Like, I yeah. like AB, but he don't throw enough punches as... Uh, well, I ain't going to bring up all the old fights, but he don't throw enough punches these days. Yeah, yeah, I say the same thing. Uh, we our last episode we did last night, we were doing a discussion about that, and like, man, he's forty years old, but you know, AB, he didn't, he, didn't, I just feel like he don't have that, he don't have a different look for, for Manny. You know, Manny's yeah. seen it all, been through it all. You know, with their styles, I just don't see it. He could pull the upset, but that you know, forties or not, he's still a legend in the sport. And, he, he gonna have to bring something new to the table if he wanna win that fight. I know for real, yeah. That's exactly what I said, yeah. But uh, yeah. But look, Dusty, I don't want to hold you up though. Uh, you know, I appreciate you coming through. Yeah. Before you go, can you just tell uh everybody your name and uh you know where to hear your, hear this episode at? It's Destiny Day Owens, future world champion, and I'm very thankful for this interview with the Jab Podcast. Everybody go check out that show. This awesome show on the Jam Effect.com. Yeah, appreciate that. And um, you know, anytime you want to come back through, you know, even after your debut, if you want to come back through and uh, you know, just chop it up with us, you can. Cause like I said, shout out to my co-host Boxing P. He's from Baltimore, and um, you know, kind of chop it up again. All right. All right. Yeah, but uh, thanks again, Destiny. Yeah, good luck on the 26th. And yeah, we'll talk to you again soon, hopefully. All right. Thank you. All right, take care. Thank you. All right, everybody, that was uh, Destiny Day Owens. And uh, that's all we got for this episode. Make sure y'all subscribe to us on Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, and SoundCloud. And follow us on uh, The Jab Effect social media at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Jab Effect. As always, my name is Combo Breaker 99. Shout out to my man Boxing P. Shout out to Destiny Day Owens. I'm out. Peace.